How you doing? I know it's been a while, but here we go. So, solar power. We've made a lot of progress since 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Albert, and this is Albert's Voice Solar. Started a channel back in March, let's see, 2021. And since then, you know, we put solar in the SUV, called that the SUVG, the solar generator, that's hooked up directly to the battery. Mm -hmm. So we got a 55 watt RV, um, about 27 inches wide, almost three feet wide, and about 13 inches in, uh, in depth. That's what's on the panel. It fits perfectly in my dash, right? Perfectly. I and mean, this is a little, I can put it a little bigger, but yeah. So we have a 55 watt panel there. It's hooked up to an M MPPT because uh, uh, W, uh, sorry, a PWM wouldn't work. Tried that, didn't get no good results. But the, the, um, the MPPT, a lot of people say, that well, that model wasn't good because that model, the Bluetooth was bad. Well, they were right. The Bluetooth app was bad. So somebody else came up with a better app and I did show it in the, um, it's a Bluetooth app, but it's, it works better. It syncs better with the, um, the, the MPPT I'm using, which was built more for heavy duty, 20 amp. The battery is 23 amp. You do not want to go 30 amp or 40 amp. Okay. okay, I'm using an AGM battery um, that can handle more stress, more devices, air conditioning, everything, starting up the vehicle, you name it. So that's what you have to do. You pay more for that kind of a battery. So that's what I have in there. Now, when I first started it with the solar, the AGM battery that was in there, you know, it was already bad. Uh, one of the cells that went bad in it. So uh, when I replaced it, uh, they didn't know what, hey, what's these extra wires for? They didn't even know nothing about the solar. They didn't know that you can put solar in the SUV. They didn't know nothing. You have to educate your people. Well, I did a, a recent job for a uh, tech company. I can't, you know, I'm good to say. Yeah, I can say, you know, I the obligation. Yeah. So every year um, down in Miami, um, JP Morgan, they go down and they have a big conference. So I was called in to go down there. So, one day, I couldn't, there's, there's no place to park. It's an island, right? <laughs> We're going to park the vehicle. So I parked it on the ground to get there early, to try to get a park and spot. This time, I had to use valet. Now, my company, Buckle and Snubble, they don't want to pay, but the valet would have been expensive. They parked it underneath the hotel. This is the Ritz Carlton Hotel in Biscayne, down and down, down there. So JP Morgan, big JP Morgan Chase, big. 20, 21 trillion dollar company. Yeah. They host a big gavel. They had a it's almost a thousand foot uh, panel monitor, which they use different mo panel monitors. And this large screen. I have pictures. I have pictures of everything. I can show people that. I, show, I have pictures because I show proof that I have experienced all this stuff. But what I am saying is this. I had to get the vehicle to valet. Now you're saying, who's going to pay for that? Aha. I talked to the head manager. It was a woman. And I told her, hey, I'm working on this project for JP Moore. You know, Chase, you're one of your clients. They're the big function gathering here. And I need to park. So you can you validate the, the, um, the valet? She said, no problem. Not only did she validate it, she put her name. So I had to pay for nothing. I don't even have to give him a tip. It's all covered. She covered it all. But the valet, when he brought my vehicle back in the dark, because I didn't leave there until like around 10, almost 11, because the project, very busy, very busy project. I was responsible for a dozen, over a dozen uh, HP uh, MPS, managed uh, printers uh, systems. So, so he said, hey, what's this in your vehicle? And he didn't know what it was. Um, that's a solar generator. And um, takes the solar energy, takes it through the, this is a 
solar controller and sends it to the battery. It keeps the battery charged. Sun rays go down, goes in there and goes back to battery. You know, I have all the, I have the 10 gauge wire. Yes, that's the best wire. You should, well, you use what, what that is. You don't want to put anything small. And you have to put um, the MCP force um, fuses, inline fuses throughout the whole thing. And the fuse for the connector for the battery at the other end. Because if anything goes wrong, you know, those fuses will hit first. So that's what keeps the battery going. Solar panel, everything's working like this. And, the, and that come in handy. When the battery comes near to its life, end of life, it won't start. Then the starter had gone bad. So we needed extra power to start up the vehicle. First it went, <coughs> then the solar would kick in and start up the vehicle. It helped a, a weak starter start up. Yeah. Yeah, so the starter had to be replaced. I'm trying to convince these people where I was, I didn't go to the dealer, I went off dealer, a property company um, place. Just a bunch of old men that knew what they were doing with cars. People go there all the time to replace the starter. They got the starter and they put it in. They say, oh, you don't need no starter. They test it out the vehicle. Yes, you, I do <laughs> need a starter. Because the solar was still connected up. They didn't know what the solar was. They were scared to work in the vehicle. No, no, we don't. We don't know nothing about the solar. I don't want people scared for. I want to get a badge powered by the sun. I'm telling you, I'm driving that vehicle. That's that solar, that sun hitting that panel. Then you're going to say, well, the alternator kicks in. But why make the alternator work so hard, right? Use up more gas. Because the alternator is saying, hey, gasoline engine, you, I, we need to use more gas so I can, you know, pop, you know, you know, get the bit, belts going. But if you didn't have to do all that and say, hey, we didn't have to ask for that gas. Do you see what I mean? Because I'm telling you, I feel, like, I feel like a boost. I have a peppy engine as it is. I'm not saying we have a turbine, but I'm just saying it feels like a, there's a boost going on, especially when the solar is out to get extra kick of power. With no drag or no slag or nothing like that. You have to try it for yourselves. Make sure you, you get a panel that's equivalent to what you have for a battery. Okay? And make sure it's an AGM battery. Don't Not the, not the other kind of batteries that got out there. And you get an MPTPT. I have a video explaining the whole process. You know? There's other people have other videos and pictures too, but my system works. It's been working since 2021. I had a, a top, a top something, and um, top, top spot, the whatever it's called. It was a um, aluminum glass solar panel. I had it on the dash. It was 20 watts. That wasn't a, that wasn't doing nothing. Hooked up to a uh, PWM. It wasn't doing nothing. Nothing. So now I can have my vehicle idle. That's right. Turn off the engine. Turn on the key. Let the solar charge up the battery. You see how that works? Solar panel charging up the battery. The battery don't have to drain, and I can I have my. Uh, I have my stuff plugged in. I can charge my phone, listen to my music, and the battery doesn't have to de deplete itself because we have solar, 55 watts of power going in continuously from the sun, continuously going back to the battery. See? And the battery is being used and the solar is going to... That's how the system works. Then that extra power keeps the battery fully peaked and charged. You get into that battery, boom, it starts. Because you know battery depletes, depletes. People don't realize why you have solar panel in the vehicle. Sometimes they don't even see it. I have to show them. Those that come to the house and try to pedal solar. I thought they would be interested, right? They're not interested. All they're interested is you get the solar panel on your roof. And you have to pay monthly. They say, hey, we'll pay for the first three months. Don't sign no contract. Don't, don't do nothing. You investigate and see who has the best plan. If you need such a system, it's very expensive. The solar panels on the roof. Very expensive. Neighbor has one. He has twenty one thousand dollar panels. Yes, yeah, right. It's over twenty thousand dollars plus the label plus of it. But they made one mistake. At night they have to use electricity. There's no battery backup. There's nothing had the there's in the daytime they, they use the solar. If the sun. 
There's no battery system. What's the sense in putting up a told about his wife? You guys should have got a battery, batteries. And you charge up those, the solar could charge up those batteries and you can still run your appliances and stuff, but you would have that battery. And then at night, you would have your batteries kicking. Now you have nothing. Then they come to my door and they tell me, oh, you don't need no batteries. <laughs> you don't need Tesla. Tesla, the whole roof is your solar panel. Yeah. There's some part, some kind of incentive where you're getting um, the government's taking paying for all that stuff. I don't know. I haven't investigated yet. Those who come to the door, they try to get you. You sign and had those people come into your house. You're screwed. Don't do it. Investigate yourself. See what's available. Then you get a real company come to your house that's really into the soul. None of these fly by night companies who uh, say it's kind of smart solar, you know, send guys out that have no experience and know nothing. And then they come out with another guy who's wearing a black shirt. That's the guy that has either a manager or supervisor has experience in selling. But they haven't met their match. That's me. I used to sell other things. So. I know the little games, the California sales pitches and the little schemes. No. You say no, you don't want it. You don't want them coming to the door. You don't buy anything from the door. You don't know what they offering. They can have, where is it? Stuff with the writing on it. Oh, by the way, whatever they're using for these is thick. This is 30, milli 30 milliliter. So they're using something really, honestly, going over and over and over again. <laughs> it's really thick. Because I grab one of their sheets. It's supposed to help the uneducated homeowner understand what's sold. Hey, you know, your electric bill is going up. You know, they're raising the electric bill. Yeah. Well, yes. if you got central air conditioning like me, I know this might be going off topic, but, you know, since I was high, hot. How cold do you want your house in the daytime? But do you think by turning the thermostat down, it'd be colder? No, that freon, that refrigeration um, gas that's in your in system, it's cold. It's a certain temperature. It's cold. You might have one house at sixty. No. What's that say? Oh, you might want the house at. Um, I leave mine at eighty. It's cold in here. You say eighty? Yeah, it's eighty. There's a capacitor out there. It's got a little metal box. Those go bad because the, the homeowner does not understand. By turning down the temperature, you're going to try to force the system to to do more work. That little thing, that little capacitor, that puts, when you turn on your conditioning system, it don't come on one, two, three. You have to wait for it to charge outside. That little thing charges it up. Boom. The motor out there kicks on. Okay? On, off, on, off, on, off, on. And that's what the capacitor does. It takes care of that. And, you know, eventually that will swell and go bad. It'll make a noise, like a high, high, high pitch squeal. You, sound, you think it's a fan going bad. No, it's the capacitor. Oh, that's my, um, that's my, um, that's this. Gotta turn it off. This is a good thing. This is a multimeter tester. This is good. This helps with the, um, the vehicle. Test out the battery. Test out your solar. The whole thing. Yeah, those solar watt panels I got in there, they're rated at between 80, 18, not 80, 18 volt to 23 volts, yeah. which is not bad. And you got a 55 watt panel, perfect. And it's that new um, flex, um, that was it, E, F, T, F. I, I do apologize. It's been a while. I haven't really sit here and talk about solar to anybody for a while. Sometimes I tell you what's going on with the battery and I show you the system. How the the PV they call it the PV the panels are doing, how the system is charging, charging very well. No problems. I really haven't taken a vehicle on a long trip. I used to go down to down to Miami, but like I said, I I didn't burn much gas. You don't burn much as you don't burn a lot of gas. The alternator doesn't have to work so hard. You get the solar and you get the, everything hooked up. The battery is fully charged because the alternator is keeping that battery fully charged. But if if it doesn't need to keep it that way, they would say, oh, you're going to screw up your system. And you're sending battery. It's like you had another battery in the, the vehicle. 
That's what it is. I want to put up another panel in there um, and have it hooked up to a lithium. But good thing I didn't do that because lithium would explode. It, it, they, lithium cannot take the heat. Got to keep cold. The only thing that can work in there is another AGM battery. And I would have to, we're going to put that and I have to put it, get a smaller one and put it in the engine compartment and build a case for it. Yeah. So be careful with solar panels and the lithium ion batteries because you see where a lot of people stop catching fire. Those things have to be kept cool. It's a, it's a lot. So there's some people say, well, let add us a battery. Don't last long. Get AGMs, but AGMs are expensive. I tried all the lithium batteries to head off Amazon. Some of them came dead, dead all right. They're dead. They're old. Who knows how long they have them in the warehouse. They're discharged. You try to recharge them, they won't recharge. So be careful. Be careful. It's, it's a lot of work. What I use now, I use lawnmower batteries, 20 volt lithium. They're heavy duty. They're designed for the lawn. Be careful with them because if they, you can coil as close as short, make sure you know which one is negative and positive. And you put the wrong one there, forget that battery. That battery's gone. The um, the um, uh, oh, what's it called again? The battery, there's a battery protection in it that will go bad. That will shut off and shut the whole thing off. Of course, you could take it apart, take out the batteries, put it in another unit. That where the batteries are dead, well then yeah, then that's what you can do. Because the batteries in there are still good, you just have to put it in there. I have another device that it's base, it's a preamp. It has guess what it has? The sixteen, um, this was the sixteen fifty batteries. I, I believe that's what it's called. Those rechargeable batteries, the batteries that they they use for solar and stuff like that. So that works. That's that that's five volt. I can plug that into my in these twelve volt to get it going. I can plug that into my solar generator. I built a solar generator. I built three of them. One of them we had an incident. <laughs> the second one is what I have now. I have that in a special case. That's portable. I can take that anywhere I want. To take it portable, I would have to put some extra clamps in there. But it's designed to go outside, have a solar panel hooked up to it. You can use it for, at you know you can use that at night. You can anything that that runs off twelve volts, whether it's cooking utensils, lights, whatever it is that you have, that can handle it. That's what it's designed for. Now, when I get more money, I'm going to put solar panels in this window and in the living room, two hundred watts, and it had three of these generators going. I would like to hook them up to sprinkler systems. Yeah, and get to use the rain water. Right, would go into a barrel. And use a pump. The pump system was on about thirty dollars, but that's thirty dollars with the with the panel. But I already have panels, so I had to run the wire and it go, and I won't have to use waste no water from the city or the state or wherever it's coming, because I have my own water from the rain. I can water the lawn. I have to use no extra electricity or no pump system. I have my own pump and everything that's running off solar. Solar batteries. That's what I want to build. To buy it, be honest with it, that could be built and kept outside it, it, in a waterproof container. It could be done. It just costs money to do so because you need panels. I have the panels to be mounted on the house without the, anybody knowing they're there because you couldn't tell. I said, I, have panel, I told them I had panels in my house. Where are they? They're right there. You don't see it? They can't see it. Same thing like my SUV. My panel my SUV. Where is it? I don't see it. But it's there. <laughs> but like I said. Hey, um, I had a company, um, Lens Sun, they were gonna send me stuff, but it was very fishy with them. That they, they contacted me from Hong Kong. I don't know, we, we up to now I don't even think it was really them because why can't you send the panels to me from Amazon directly to me? Why do you have to go through banks and all those other stuff? It turned out to be a sham. Too bad. But they said they want to send me one of the, the latest technologies. So send it for me from your California warehouse. Oh, it can't work like that. Well, oh well, never worked. But anyway, if I'm being sponsored, you would know. But this video is not being sponsored by nobody. It's just me talking to you. It's been a while, but I just let you know what's happened. Uh, everything's working. I charge up my, my phone to charge up faster. I use 20 volt um, 
batteries. I, I got some of them from uh, Amazon that were cheaper, but they had higher voltage. Walmart has the batteries too, the hard batteries, but they're expensive and they have their um, hyper tough battery. If you see any clearance or any deals on that, get them. Get, them. get, get at least four of them. Yeah. And when they charge up, you can run your devices. The batteries will last a long time. I mean, your devices, you charge up your cell phone, you can charge up your iPad, you can charge up, you can run anything that runs off USB. Lighting in here is USB. Anything that's USB, anything that needs 12 volt to get going. Yeah. And you also your, your laptop, PDs, you get to the PD adapter. You plug your lap your laptop into my generator, it'll run it. It'll run a um, inverter. Right. The thing is, right now we have an inverter in there. So the inverter converts the the panel and the 20 volts into 12 volts. Because remember it's 20 volts, right? And the panels are 18 volts, right? You want to convert that into 12 volts so you can run the 12 volt devices so you need a device that can handle up to it handles up to 480 watts and it takes high voltage and it converts it to 12 volts yeah 12.4 if i get a reading of 12.4 12.4 is the highest anything under that you know <laughs> needs to be charged so i can charge by electricity and i can charge it by solar you can we can i can use it while using see a lot of these solar generators that couldn't you can charge them at the sun and use them at the same time i can i can work like that i built fuses and i built a couple of things to use it with um but yeah i built um i forget the names they're metal plates and that's how everything's hooked up um, I forget, there's a, there's a word for those metal plates. So it's been a while, but, so I use metal plates and they are hooked up for the negative and the positive and it all goes, but it works. And when it works, you feel good about that. But you gotta remember, you, you gotta use fuses. You gotta remember, you gotta use fuses. Fuses have to be used. What size fuse? <clears throat> it depends how much, how much we're talking about. 25, you know, and that's 30, because when the fuse goes, the battery won't charge, you see? So always check your connections. Anyway, if you have an MP MPPT, it'll tell you if there's a battery connection or not. Okay. Or you can check the app. The app will tell you if the bat if the sun is charging, if it's the system is charging. So you need to know, because I don't have no readout on mine. Right, that's why I use Bluetooth. I'm wearing solar because we're dealing with sun. I have the, the studio set change the sun color. We're wearing a yellow shirt. We're dealing with sun. This is what this is the channel is about. The sun. I'm not trying to look cool. I also look cool. Why? We're, not, we're talking about the solar. Solar sun, right? So that's why I'm just like this. But I, I hope you enjoy watching this video. Do subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get the channel up to 500. They changed the algorithm before you need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. They don't care about the watch hours. They care about uh, the subscribers. So we'll bring up the channel to 500 for me. Okay? Thank you. I do appreciate it. I never asked before when I had started the channel because I was never thought of thinking about that. I was thinking about bringing you good content. I was excited, you know, because we got solar and we can put it in the vehicle. What else can we use solar for? We can use solar for everything. I'm surprised of the things that I have in my own place here that runs off 12 volt. Most of the, um, Hey Google and the Alexa and things like that. A lot of things, um, that use 12 volt, like your router. Yeah. You buy some wireless routers at 12 volt. You can go on the road and have Wi-Fi as long as you have a signal and it's connected to something. You can, you can have a Wi-Fi signal going or in your vehicle. Say you have Wi-Fi and you want to extend it and make it stronger. Extend outside the car, you know, you have Wi-Fi or your CB radio. 
all that stuff. That's what I need to get as a CB radio antenna. I don't know what happened to mine. I think it wasn't. Oh, I know what happened. It wasn't sticking. Yeah, it's four watts. It's pretty strong. There's people on there. I used to go up, up and down the East Coast and talk to the to, to the truckers. Uh, they would call me driver. <laughs> But well, hey, they let you know with the uh, speeders, you know, where the Smokies were, the police. I was follow I followed right behind that tractor trailer. He was going pretty quick. I just followed right behind him. What the heck? I went through North, South Carolina so quickly. I didn't realize how small the state is. But he was going really fast. I just stayed right on him. And they said, hey, we got a driver right behind us. <laughs> and one day, the, the state tour was right behind us, but they didn't stop us. I don't know. Who knows? Just be safe on the road, and that's all. It comes in handy to talk to the truckers, you know? They're there. You can talk to them. You just have to know the lingo. <laughs> but, hey, thanks for listening. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Very important. Got to bring the channel up to speed. Uh, we'll keep making videos because I have this equipment still going. And you can learn. When I get enough extra dough... <laughs> You know, hopefully, when, when the channel has 500, then, you know, yeah, I, I'll get paid. But, you know, and I can take that money to get things that I need. And what do I need? I need some more solar panels. They're expensive. Yeah, they're expensive now. Well, I want the same thing that I have in the SUV and the same thing I have on the house. I want that thin one because it's it's easier. And I know how I use, I use chef hooks, hooks that you hang pots with. Those are heavy duty, and they fit right in, and they can. And I have um, a trestle, so the panels are not just like this; they're tilted, so the sun hits them like that. Oops, yeah. I have my mind, you know. Hey, I'm a creative thinker. I'm constantly thinking, and, uh, and my job is when I do these projects is to go in and assess the problem, and to come up come up with a solution. I do the same thing with the with the solar. I assess the problem, and I come up with a solution. Oh, by the way, the ACs, if your AC in the house is not cold, clean the coil. Turn off the unit, go inside the air handler. I'll teach on my other channel. I don't know what channel I'm going to do it on. I do have a studio channel. It's called Albert's Voice Studio. And that's supposed to be a combination of the different channel. Things that I can't put on the other channels, like in this, I can't really talk about this AC air conditioning unit and how to clean the coil and what happens when you clean the coil you clean that coil and how to clean it too because it has all the muck you clean out that coil yourself it's like a cold that's the whole cold and another thing too is the line the the pan line where it holds the condensed water and spits it out you clear out that that's that's another thing. you clear out that and you clear out the, you clean out the coils so the air so the air can go through the coils and outside you have you got the outside unit. That's the air handler. And you got the outside unit, too. There's a big coil in it. You got double coil. I didn't know about the double coil. I saw it on YouTube, but he didn't explain about that. You clean out that coil just as you have to get a part, too, by the way, to clean it. You can't just spray it from outside and doing it. You have to take off that fan. You lift the fan up, and you have to hold it. And have somebody else hold it. Then you clean out the coils, and then you let it soak, and then you clear it out. Once you do all that, the whole system is running, running properly. Your electric bill will drop because the unit is turning itself on and off. That thing has to stand on and on because it's trying to keep the place cold and that hot air is coming out. Then you've got to use one of these little things, which I use on the batteries. Yeah, you aim this. As it has an infrared aim and you aim it on the, the air conditioning duct. I can't do it off my glasses, sunglasses on. But what I'm saying is if you do all of that, it'll tell you what the temperature is. Those things are supposed to be 60, 63 degrees or 53 degrees, your duck. If it's higher, there's something wrong with the system. And you don't have to call them out to come out. You could do it yourself. This is a do-yourself, a do-it-yourself -your channel. Do it yourself. All right, thanks, um, you solo guys, and girls, and everybody else. This video will be the main video for now until something comes up, something's changed. But I still have my Gold Power Plus. I, well, you know, we had four of them.
two, you know, experimental. <laughs> and the other one, the other two are still working. I'm, I believe I'm going to pass 500 charges. It works. What's gone bad is the the charging device. The, bat, the AC, I mean the um, the DC connector to AC. That, that's gone bad. Two of them stopped blinking. But I can use my solar generator that I built. The ABG, Albert's voice. It's AB, AB SG. That's Albert's voice solar generator. I can have that to charge up to go power plus. Mm. Yeah. And I have a go power plus flashlight too. And that flashlight turns into a, that can set up your car. It came with jumper cables. Yeah. Hey, well, I'm into this stuff. And I run a studio here and I run it and I do music and I have a lot of channels. You know, Right now, uh, I've been working on two channels to get them to YPP status. And I would like to get this to YPP status with your help. So subscribe. That's all you have to do. Nothing else. Okay. I'll do the rest. And, you know, save us some money and buy some panels. And get, you know, and we can do more with the thing. I can show you how the sprinkling system works. I was, can't wait for that to happen. Right now, we're in the rainy season. But sometimes it's really dry. And if, I, if you use... The city water, it's it gets expensive. Let's see. Ooh, how long have I talked? Oops. All right. I gotta let you guys go and girls. Hey, try the solar out in your SUV. Um, a lot of you might have EVs. See, right now, a lot of you have plug-in hybrids and hybrids. I would like to talk about that. But see, but the, those devices don't use solar. The, and the reason why the manufacturers don't want to put solar panels on it, it costs money. But you could do it yourself. Remember, those those um, hybrids and plug-in hybrids, they have a car 12-volt battery in there. That battery has to be kept charged. That battery should be, should be an AGM battery. They keep it in the trunk. If it's an AGM battery, you can hook up to what I'm using, and it'll keep it fully charged. Because they use that battery to run the... The bulbs and stuff. You would think that the electrical batteries to run the vehicle would be able to do all of that. Some vehicles it does that. But there's something else. I was looking at the um, the plug-in hybrids. So that's gasoline. That's hybrid technology. That's a little EV technology. So you got gasoline, EV, hybrids. You got a larger battery. You can plug. You can plug that in. Got a hybrid. You get on plug-in. It regens. From the engine, so the engine is like a generator, and it's sending power to the batteries. But the battery is smaller, so it don't last. But that's the first technology, the plug-in hybrid. It's better because that's making the, the gas engine. You know, you have an engine in the front wheel and an engine in the back wheel, right? And it's regenerating the power into it, so it you can drive your vehicle on electric only. But the range is tiny, even with the uh, at the time of this video, the Toyota RAV4 um, Prime, if you can get one, 40 mile range. And we know in real life, that's going to be like what, 35 range. Yeah. Some people say it's higher. It, it depends. But we're dealing with electric. We're not dealing with combustion engine. But there is a combustion engine, engine in there. Now, EV only. And people, people are scared to get EV, which is all electric and there's no gas engine. They're scared about that. That's where you're going to plug it in. But you could have solar. I know a guy, he had a generator, gas generator. <laughs> it defeats the purpose. And he had it plugged in into his vehicle. So when his bat when the, when the battery in his vehicle go, was low and he had no place to charge it, he would plug that in and drive the vehicle. I don't know if you can drive it and at the same time, but he can charge it. But it defeats the purpose. I think I say all gas stations should have solar hookups. Because they have a 150,000 gas stations, right? Throughout the United States. And you don't have that much charging station for electric. <laughs> Common sense doesn't tell you. Anyway, plug in hybrid. It's fun. You'll have gas. The gas engine depletes. But a lot of them, the hybrid and the gas. The, 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 the mileage is terrible. 
Well, like like Mitsubishi Outlander, it's big, but the Mitsubishi Outlander uses an old engine from from the eighties, right? It's a two point four liter, and it's only getting like twenty six. They said twenty six, twenty seven, twenty six. So twenty six city, twenty seven highway, twenty six combined. Where the Highlander is higher, and the uh, the uh, tent, uh, Sportage from um, is it KN Kia? It's supposed to the key, that's supposed to get higher, like in the thirties. Not dealing with too much, ten more. But the whole thing is that they didn't really get better miles than you're getting from your gas. Then the advantages of that maybe some days you don't burn so much gas. You see, the plug-in hybrid is a very expensive system because you have gas engine, you have the batteries, you have the uh, the plug-in feature, you got the hybrid, you got all, you got a lot. There's a lot going on in your vehicle with that. You know, you got two generators, one for the front, with the motor generator for the front wheels. You got a motor generator for the back wheels. Sometimes some of them have an axle system that keeps the back wheels spinning. That's, so that's more weight, remember? That's more things to worry about that way. Some of them have an electric motor in the back and there's no thing like that. And they use a computer to kick in and when to turn that back, those back wheels are. And from the slippage, that's what the Prime has. Um, um, Honda doesn't have that. Honda uses, I think, mechanical. I don't know. I don't. I didn't. I don't know. I'd have to test drive. I did try to test drive the Honda Clarity. That was twenty five thousand dollars. That was a plug in hybrid. I wasn't too impressed with it. I drove it. I felt like, what? The, where's the power in this? It was, I, I, I turn. I drove it on EV mode. It was slow. I wanted to test at the CRV. But it, they never had it. Now they it look like they don't have it. Shortage <laughs> and those things. But that's just a hybrid. Without the plug-in feature, you're not going to get the benefits of having a, a half gas, half electric vehicle, EV vehicle. There's limited range. I, I can't believe they build it with eight. I, I can't believe they build it with 38 miles, 26 miles. What's this? What's the sense in buying all that stuff? It's expensive. And the first hybrids, they, they can only go like 80. Oh, no, first EV is going to go 80 miles. But GM, they got the Silverado. Is that what it's called? Uh, the, the white van. It's it's a commercial van. They want $80,000 for that. That does 450 miles. <whistles> had a lot of room in it. It's a lot of money. Why? Why, GM? Why charge so much? Where's the affordable electric vehicles for 20000 to make Americans, you know, be able should the government invest more? Because the government's only giving you seventy five hundred. That's not enough. They should give you at least twenty thousand. <laughs> the system is so corrupt at this point. Anyway, I don't want to get into too much. The way they spend money to give other countries billions of dollars to help them. You need to invest in America and get the American people. Let them have a choice. Every American, if you're a taxpayer, you should have your own you pick what you want, E V, car whatever it is you want, and you should have it in your driveway. And you get incentives to have having it in your driveway, and you can live a happy, normal life. You don't have to stress out and worry about all this stuff. Come on, come on. This doesn't make no sense. I'm not running for president, but if I decide to, I'll let you know. <laughs> but I'm just saying, that's common sense. They need to think about us. They don't think about us. And you know, we have alternative food, fuel. We have... We have Natural gas and NGV. I've seen those. I talked to a governor guy, a government uh, employee about that. He was driving one. He said it was no different from gas, but it got more power. Then you have uh, uh, propane. Fuel cells. Remember that technology? Which is very expensive. But the gasoline engine is always there. Always there. And that gas goes. You use it. It evaporates. Boom. But, you know, anyway, that's about it. Hey, take care. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm out of here. Time to take off the shades.